Today, we're looking at a big skin mystery. You OK, Chris? Yep, I'm just helping my body to get rid of a few thousand dead skin cells. Uh, OK. As I scratch my skin, the top layer is flaking off into the air. Yes, I can see that, Chris, but why? Your body already does that all by itself to make way for new skin cells. In fact, as it grows, skin sheds 50,000 dead cells every single minute, totally replenishing itself every four weeks. Yes, I know, Sam. I know all your skin facts. I told you most of them. OK, well, why are you flaking off your skin, then? Because, Zahn, I am trying to solve, once and for all, a question that has puzzled humankind throughout the ages. Since ancient times, we have searched, nay, quested... Yes, that's right, right, Chris. Throughout history, legions of scientists have been desperate to answer this one burning question. What is the question? Why does the skin on our fingers and toes go wrinkly in the bath? Yes, I have always wondered about that. Exactly. The answer just has to be out there somewhere. Well, I have heard tell of a new scientific theory in which you may be interested. This, Chris, could hold the key that unlocks the ring. Really? And it's all to do with this. Now, take hold of that. Ugh. There has been a big new research study into this skin mystery, and their results suggested that our fingers and toes get wrinkly to help you grip wet things. Like the grooves on this tyre, the wrinkles in wet skin create little channels for the water to escape, giving you more grip on a wet surface. Well, I don't believe it. I didn't say put the tyre down. I think the only thing for us to do is put it to the test like proper scientists. Can I put it down now? No. There we go. Sand, what are you doing? Well, I'm getting ready to test the why do our fingers go wrinkly in the bath theory, obviously. Right, we don't actually need to have a bath to do that, though. If you'd bothered to read this research carefully, then you'd see we simply need to replicate the real experiment that the other scientists use here. Right? Obviously. I'm not convinced myself, but let's put this wrinkly finger theory to the test. Are you ready, Sand? I'm ready. Go! Using just our thumbs and forefingers, we're moving wet objects from one bowl to another through the screen. First, we're timing how long it takes us with smooth, non-wrinkly fingers. I know it's not a race, but I really want to beat you, Chris. Yes! No! Oh! So, my time for smooth, non-wrinkly fingers was 32 seconds. And mine was 35 seconds. Now, we'll repeat exactly the same experiment, but with wrinkly fingers. So, we need to soak them like when you've had a bath. I'm thinking I might just use a bowl of warm water to pop our fingers in. Now, Zand... Zand? Zand! What are you doing? I'm having a bath. You said we needed our fingers to be wrinkly, like in the bath. Right, but we only need to soak our hands in a bowl of warm water, not our whole bodies. Well, now that I'm in, it seems like a shame not to have a soak. So our hands are having some quality warm water time, ensuring our fingers are really wrinkly for the next part of the experiment. After 10 minutes, things are looking super shriveled. Let's put those pinkies through their paces. Three, two, one, go! If the new theory is right, our wrinkly fingers will be better at gripping, and so we'll do the experiment quicker than before. Yes! Done! Oh. Well, Zahn, it may have been a dead heat, but how did our non-wrinkly fingers compare to our wrinkly fingers?